Hey everyone, um, this is also kind of more of a uh, you know, work in progress report, so I'm going to um, talk a little bit about OpenMP and um, for the people that heard a talk from me before, OpenMP is you know, my side project when I don't work on compilers, I do a little bit of uh, language design. And um, so let's, let's look at OpenMP and when I usually talk about OpenMP, I always talk about offload, like getting, getting codes onto a GPU, that's, that's, what, I, that's what I do. Oh, yeah. So when you think about offloading and getting codes to a GPU, what you usually think about is kernel languages, and then the offload style is CUDA. So this is, this is you know, stereotype CUDA code. Um, you get all the threads started at the same time, they all execute the same code, the user is responsible to figure out what threads should do what, like um, figure out you know, what the synchronization should look like, and so on and so forth. So they kind of, they, they, they write in this style, it has benefits and drawbacks, but point is, a lot of existing GPU code looks like this, so if we wanna port that to other architectures, we have to start there. And this is a way for people know how to write efficient code, so this is also like a good thing. Um, if you look at OpenMP offload, it looks more like this. So um, you have the classical loops, and an OpenMP offload just says, okay, on the, on the classical OpenMP parallelization of loops, we tag this target thing, that means it goes, to the, it goes to a device, and then, so you have this loop style coding, which, I mean, it looks similar, but arguably different, right? And the point is, that difference has um, two consequences. One is, it actually makes the code slower, because we have these loops. These loops are inherently slower because they have back edges. And because they have back edges, uh, we have to save registers, and registers are precious. So um, if you look at the left, there's implicit assumptions being made by the programmer. For example, that they have more threads than they need. So they filter out all the threads that are too many. But what if you run this you know, with threads that are you know, less than n? On the OpenMP side, that has to work. That will work. You can run that with any number of threads, one for all I care, and it will work. And you can even set that at runtime and so on and so forth. So, so those kind of flexibilities that it gives you cost in terms of performance, which is sometimes doesn't matter, and sometimes it does. And even if you go, you know, new style OpenMP with, you know, everything is just loop and you just point out parallelism and your compiler does everything for you, good luck with that. Um, so you still have these loops, which means performance problems, and um, you, the user doesn't have a way to really get down to the nitty gritty. If they want to do register shuffles, if they don't want to synchronize their things explicitly, they have no means to do so. So this is what this is about, and again, this is kind of work in progress. So what I want to have is an OpenMP kernel language such that you can have OpenMP across the entire spectrum, these high level, I just point out parallelism, I tell you what to do, or I do it myself. And all of them work together in one programming model where you can you know, gradually, gradually go from one to the other. Um, they work together, they have the same memory model, you can use all the machinery about mapping, allocations, and so on, it's a force, so, so that's the plan here. Um, what you need to do is you, like if you want to especially port old CUDA code, you need to provide alternatives that hopefully look the same as the CUDA code, right? So to make it an easy rewrite, like an easy transition. One thing is you need host wrappers. So you basically already have all of the host stuff in OpenMP. You can now package them differently like this, where we have just a malloc. We use an existing OpenMP function that's called target alloc. Um, that has like, you know, some extra parameters, we kind of hide them, and then we can make effectively an API that is like CUDAs or like HIPs or whatever, but portable um, on top of, of the existing OpenMP API. So host APIs are easy. Device APIs are a little trickier, but it turns out inside of the LLVM project, we already have this code effectively twice, like in upstream. One time in the OpenMP device runtime. So the runtime that ships on the, like executes on the GPU to provide you with the helpers that actually implement these things like a four, like an OpenMP four, an OpenMP parallel. So those things have to be implemented somehow and they're implemented like this. So we say, okay, this is the implementation for a, you know, get thread num for an AMD GCN. And then we have that for Nvidia and we have that for Intel and we have that for the host. Um, and then we pick, we pick the right variant depending on what we compile for, so, so on and so forth. So we can have these device wrappers. In that way, we can provide you with the same, you know, 
or sip, like basically alternatives to things like sync threads or uh, um, thread ID.x and so on and so forth. And then um, we, but, but if you wanna really go from CUDA, you look like, let's look at the other things that CUDA code has and how, would, how that would translate into like an OpenMP kernel language. So one is um, triple chevron kernel launches, right? It's actually fairly easy to, to um, move. So all it says is, you know, launch me a grid of threads and, and run this kernel with these arguments. Um, you also have dynamic shared memory and maybe like a stream, but you can kind of simulate most of all, like all of that. Uh, we, have, we have OpenMP extensions. Two of them are on the slide here. Everything that starts with OMPX is an extension. It's not part of the standard. Um, the C grouped in memory is for dynamic shared memory. That is implemented in Clang and working right now. Um, the OMPX kernel is basically saying, I don't want any of the OpenMP baggage. Give me a pure kernel. Just compile this code. No ICVs. I'm not going to rely on the OpenMP runtime whatsoever. Just start the threads in the grid and execute this. So that is prototype, but not an upstream claim. Okay, so far so good. Now you have things like you know device or global or shared underscore underscore. Those are actually already attributes anyway. Uh, if you use Clang as, as a CUDA compiler, um, OpenMP has syntax for all of these things, more or less. Um, so right now you would need to write this, which is, I mean, not nice, but you could do it. So you can actually port your CUDA code uh, this way, um, a little bit nicer. And this is something that I would like to see is uh, the new way of OpenMP actually allows you to use attributes like in C++ that's implemented in Clang. This one isn't because again, extension, but you could use attribute syntax and then you can just uh, you know, go from one to the other easy peasy. Um, so I don't have numbers for this particular OpenMP as a kernel language, but I have numbers of what happens if we take CUDA code and execute it through the OpenMP runtimes, which is effectively what this would do if you would do this rewrite and you would have all your code as kind of, um, as an OpenMP kernel language. So what we did is, we took CUDA code and we compiled it with the native compiler of a hardware and we compiled it with Clang on top of the OpenMP runtime and we presented these numbers before. So what you see on the left is um, on a power node with V100 NVIDIA GPUs, on the right AMD node with um, MI50 GPUs. Um, the native, like the vendor's compiler uses CUDA and HIP respectively. Um, Clang CC uses CUDA and HIP respectively and CUDA OMCC uses CUDA code. So we feed in CUDA code and we basically do this translation that I've shown you behind the scenes. So instead of doing it on source code, we just do it as part of the compilation, which is you know, the same thing in green. Now, what you see here is we can actually outperform the vendor compilers. This is just because our pipeline, like the optimization pipeline is different. Um, but even other examples, we can compete with you know, Clang as a compiler. So, so adding this stage of going through the OpenMP layer to make things portable, even, even kernel languages that are really you know, sensitive to everything, is fine, you can do that. Um, there might be an overhead, but, but so far we haven't really encountered that. And on the kernel side, like the actual code that runs on your GPU, you can get the same code out of this. I mean, the PTX is exactly the same as if you were started with CUDA, because we don't do anything except adding abstractions and we can fold them away because all of them are compile time abstractions. So once we fold them away, you get exactly the code you want, but you get portability as shown here, CUDA code executed on, a, on AMG GPUs. Okay, I think that was it. Questions later, then. find me. Thank you very much. <laughs>